Rod Machado, and I want to thank you for attending my Aviation Learning Center. I have a question for you. Have you ever wondered why VX and VY, the best angle of climb speed and the best rate of climb speed respectively, change with altitude? Well, perhaps I can offer you a different angle from which to look at this particular question. I want you to take a look at these three rate of climb curves. There's one for sea level, one for 5,000 feet MSL, and one for 10,000 feet MSL. Now, each curve represents the rate of climb for a typical small general aviation airplane at three different altitudes. And the very tip top of each curve represents the maximum rate of climb for that particular altitude. Now, unless there's been an oxygen shortage in your neighborhood, it should be pretty apparent to you that as altitude increases, the maximum rate of climb decreases. But I want you to take notice that the top of each curve shifts to the right slightly as altitude increases. In other words, as the maximum rate of climb decreases with altitude, the airspeed at which this occurs increases slightly when measured as a true airspeed. And this is found by dropping down to the horizontal axis of the graph, which is calibrated in terms of true airspeed. And by the way, the reason I'm using true airspeed on the horizontal axis instead of indicated airspeed is that it allows us to more accurately represent the airplane's performance at various altitudes. Since the green dots represent the best rate of climb speed at three different altitudes, it's pretty clear that VY does indeed increase with an increase in altitude. Now, let's create three lines running from the origin of the graph and tangent to each rate of climb curve. The point where the line touches each curve, the red dot, represents the best angle of climb speed, or VX, which is similarly found by dropping straight down to the graph's horizontal axis. Geometrically speaking, the slope of each tangent line running through each red dot represents the maximum vertical gain for a given distance traveled horizontally. And we know this to be the classic definition of the best angle of climb speed. The important thing to notice here is that the best angle of climb speed also increases with an increase in altitude, but it does so a little bit faster than the best rate of climb speed. Therefore, VX and VY as true airspeeds converge on each other as altitude is increased. Now, here's the plot of VX and VY as true airspeed values on a traditional graph. So ask yourself, what airspeed would you need to indicate to achieve each true airspeed value for VX and VY at sea level, 5,000 feet and 10,000 feet MSL? And the way to find that out is to use your E6B computer. And as you can see here, at 10,000 feet MSL on a standard day, we need an indicated airspeed of 65 knots to produce a true airspeed of 77 knots, and an indicated airspeed of 69 knots to produce a true airspeed of 82 knots. And when you do this uh, for all the other airspeed values, you get these indicated airspeeds. Now, let's take our indicated airspeed values for VX and VY and plot how they change with altitude. Now, here's the graph that you're probably more familiar with. So, why does the best rate of climb line here, in other words, the VY line, tilt to the left? While VY, the best rate of climb speed, increases with altitude as a true airspeed, it just doesn't increase that quickly. Therefore, the indicated airspeed value needed to produce any given true airspeed value decreases at a slower rate for VY than VX as altitude increases, and that's why the best rate of climb line tilts to the left and converges with the best angle of climb speed line. In fact, the point at which they converge is the point where the airplane has zero rate of climb, also known as its absolute ceiling. So there you have it, a brief explanation as to why VX and VY converge on each other as true airspeeds and as indicated airspeeds. So thank you very much for tuning in to my Aviation Learning Center. I've been Rod Machado.